My ultimate goal in life is to land a sponsorship with Phil's and name my drink Tensor Fashe Latte. <laughs> You know what I was thinking about the other day? When was the last time I wrote Reduce the Matrix? <laughs> so before we get started into this video, I just wanted to really quickly, you know, not to be too dramatic, thank the people who helped me, supported me, and influenced me throughout this past year. You know, I have a running list of people that I'm gonna have to one day thank for helping me get to where I am today. And you know, it's really important that after all of the miles that we've traveled, to not forget where we've come from. So a couple of weeks ago, it was a few days after the last day of my first year of med school and I was on this train back into Chicago. I usually take this two hour train from Urbana-Champaign into the city. And usually when I'm on this train ride, I'm occupying my mind of some sort. Like I'm listening to music, uh, I'm reading something potentially educational or I'm watching something entertaining on my phone. But this time I sat down on the train, I got my ticket checked and for the first time among the many times that I've ridden this train I didn't do anything for the entire two hours like I just sat there and I just thought about everything that happened over the past year and you know sometimes I think that our mind and our body adapt to the circumstance that we're in in order to keep up with what's going on in our surroundings and throughout this past year and I think even in the years prior to starting med school my mind and body always moved very quickly but sometimes your soul lags behind and it takes some time for your soul to catch up and when I was on that train ride back into the city it felt like my soul was finally catching up to where my mind and body were taking me over this past year and you know if you've been following this channel over the past year you would have noticed that I made these sort of reflection type videos after certain milestones along the way so I think I made one after every block or after every exam that I took because you know it's important to celebrate the small victories I remember when I was in elementary school when I was a little kid I had this principal who during her final speech I think at my graduation in sixth grade said that it's always important to smell the roses along the way and so yeah here is the end of the year recap video and you know when I was trying to plan out what I was going going to talk about in this video. I honestly did not know where to even start. I can't even make a video that can encapsulate everything that has happened. I don't even know what I'm gonna say. I don't even know, but I don't even know. I don't even know. Okay, we can start with this. So when I first started the year, I went in with just a few goals. And the first goal was to pass my exams and that I am happy to say that we have accomplished. My second goal was to make the most out of the experience, to squeeze every last drop out of this year of med school, to take life as it came and just make the most of it. And that I am also happy to say that I think we have accomplished. And then my third goal was to not play it safe. I remember during this internship that I had in college, one of my friends who was interning at the same place with me at the time said, Megan, you're gonna have to set yourself on fire. And she didn't mean it literally. She meant that if you wanted to take an idea, a passion, a project, or anything that you're doing to the highest level, you're gonna have to set yourself on fire. Like you're gonna have to go all in, all the way. And so when I was entering this first year of med school, I told myself that if there's anything that I wanted to do, I was gonna take it all the way. Okay, let's talk about something sort of fun, which are what are the highlights of this year? Off the top of my head, what are the most memorable experiences? So one of the first things that I remember was that, I don't know if you watched this video, but in the beginning of the year, we had to go around the room and introduce ourselves. And so one by one, we would stand up and then say our name and then a fun fact about ourselves. And then I stood up, I said my name, and then I said, oh, I make YouTube videos. And I was at the very back of the room at the time, right? so I couldn't hear the professor at the very front and I thought she asked me what is YouTube and so I said the one online <laughs> And 
And then, you know, it's always fun to think about the time when we were in the anatomy lab at like 10 p.m. at night in the neuro block, looking at slices of the brain because we had the anatomy practical coming up. I remember being in that lab and the lights are all dim. Me and my classmates, or my classmates and I are gathered around the table at 10 p.m. at night, just looking over slices of the brain and then being like, wait, no, get that other bucket because that bucket has the better brain. I remember thinking to myself, this has got to become a scene or a clip in a story that I'm gonna write one day. Okay, last story before we get into what this video is actually about. <laughs> You guys may have also seen that video that we produced for the engineering project in the neuro block. Uh, so we spent all day Monday filming that video. And then that video was due Thursday at midnight. And we had the neuroanatomy practical on a Wednesday. So I remember coming home after filming all day that Monday and it was like 9 p.m. I took a nap for an hour and then I woke up, it was 10 p.m. and I started editing. And I had drank some massive cold brew latte from espresso royale when we were filming so i was i was wide awake at 10 p.m and when i get in the zone of editing i just can't break out of it so i was editing all night from like 10 p.m that monday to 2 a.m when i finally finished editing this video and i'm about to export the file right when all of a sudden my entire editing software goes red like all of the footage turns bright red and i get afib at that moment, right? Because all the footage is gone. That means that all of the clips that I had cut and stitched together for the past four hours was just gone. Like all that work was wiped out. I'm pretty sure that if anyone was watching this, they would find this hilarious, but just imagine me alone in my apartment in front of my desk, hands in the air, praying that when I restarted my computer, all of my work would not have gone away. And so I remember telling myself, this is it. This is it. Like if, if it's gone, then it's gone. Just let it go. But thankfully I restarted my computer. I did not yank out the external hard drive. That is the lesson. If there's anything you take away from this video is that if you have an external hard drive, do not yank it out. <laughs> okay, let's now talk about something kind of yummy, which is academics. <laughs> I was coming off of two gap years. I don't think gap years is the appropriate term for the time period in between graduating college and then starting med school. Cause I feel like it's not a gap. It's a period of growth for me. So I hadn't studied rigorously in a classroom setting for two years, right? And it wasn't a concern of mine, but I would always hear from people that, oh, if you extract yourself from the academic environment, you're gonna have a hard time adjusting back into the classroom when you start med school. And to be totally honest, I don't entirely agree with that because I felt personally like the two years that I had away from school was very refreshing for me. That when I went back to start med school and I started studying again, I had a different perspective of the material that I would have not had had I not taken those two years off. When I approached the material after taking the two years off to work, I felt like every time I sat down to study, it was with intent. And I think the best way to optimize your studying is to be very intentional with the way you approach the material. So the analogy that I can think of for this first year of med school is kind of like a 200 meter race. When I was younger, you know, back in the day when I didn't have knee problems, no, I'm just so you know back in the day when I was uh, fit and healthy I used to compete in a couple running races so my favorite one was the 200 meter race if you guys know in track in the 200 meter race the first 100 meter is the bend and then the last 100 meter is that straightaway I felt like the time period between the summer and December or the first semester was in comparison to the first 100 meter stretch of a 200 meter race and then once it hit January it felt like I was rounding this bend of the 200 meter and then finishing the last straightaway or the last 100 meter all the way up until June. And I always loved the 200 meter because when you're coming around the bend, you're accelerating, right? Because you're changing direction. And I love it because when you get to that region where the curve begins to straighten out, you know if you're gonna win or not. Like you know what position you are among the other lanes and whether or not you're gonna finish ahead of the other. 
others. And that's how it felt in the first year of med school. Like once we finished renal and then we were starting psych and neuro, it felt like I was finally gaining momentum and I knew how to finish this race strong. Another analogy is like you're carrying this backpack and every time you finish a block, an organ system block or a unit, it's like adding a brick into your backpack. So you finish cardio, add a brick to your backpack. You finish respiratory, add another brick to your backpack. And so as you move throughout this year, your backpack becomes heavier and heavier, right? As you move through the units. And it's because that knowledge that you gain or that knowledge that you put in your backpack adds up over time. And so the weight accumulates and it's fun because in this challenge, you have to become pretty creative in the ways that you carry this backpack on your shoulder. The way that you shift the weight on your shoulders, the way that you carry the backpack, the way that you creatively learn the material is gonna shape the way that you carry the backpack throughout that first year. And you know, if you're smart, if you're strategic, if you're creative in the way that you carry your backpack, the easier it's gonna be for you to carry that weight. Okay, we could talk about the stuff that we learned. So the order the order of the organ system blocks may be a little bit different depending on the school that you go to. But during the summer, you learn the basic sciences, right? So like immunology, biochemistry, statistics, uh, you know, the fun stuff. And then once you finish summer, you do cardio. And then after cardio, it's respiratory, it's renal, and then psych, and then neuro, and then MSK, and then GI is the last six week block before you begin summer. And if we were to rank the organ systems in terms of difficulty, I personally felt like renal was the hardest. The kidneys, they're tricky stuff. Like everyone hyped up neuro and said that neuro would be the hardest, and it definitely was hard and challenging, but I find the kidneys to be just, mind-blowing. <laughs> I think cardio was a lot of fun. I think it's a little bit more difficult, not necessarily because of the content, but because you're learning cardio right at the start when you don't really know what's going on. I think in respiratory, the hardest part was learning all the bugs. Oh my goodness. Like all the bugs, they just, they just get you, you know? Pseudomonas aeruginosa, Staph aureus. What a guy. <laughs> Neuro was also very interesting. I think that was one of my favorite units. Dr. Yano ugh, did such an amazing job. MSK, the anatomy practical is just absolutely awful because you have so many structures to learn. But then I think getting over that hill and learning all of the MSK structures was probably one of the most fulfilling parts of this year. Gluteus maximus and the medius and minimus, that was a lot of fun. I think a pretty common phrase that I heard throughout this year probably said at almost everywhere in the world, not just our school, is that, oh, I feel like after studying so much, I still don't know anything. And I think that always circles back to that paradox where the more you learn, the more you realize how much you don't know. And you know, this goes for anything, not even the field of medicine. I feel like even in undergrad, even when I was studying engineering in college, you know, the more that you learn, the more that you know, the more you realize how much other knowledge there is out there that you know exists, but you just don't know the depth, the, the magnitude of that space. And of course, you know, facing that reality that there is this endless void of knowledge out there that you know exists but you just don't know how far that void expands can be pretty daunting and you know i think sometimes when you're faced with a mass amount of knowledge that you have to learn sometimes the thing that holds you back is yourself like when you're studying something it's not even how do i understand this concept it's how am i going to be able to remember the understanding of this concept in a month in two months in a year from now another thing that i've learn is that scoring high on exams doesn't quite excite me as much as before. So there's a few things that excite me and the first being when you see a concept that you learned in class be applied in a clinical scenario. So for example in class you'll learn about MIs and then it's not until I go into clinic and a patient comes in and I'm interviewing them and then they tell me about their MI and their experience that I actually become excited. It's until you use that knowledge and use it to impact someone else's life is what I think is most rewarding. And I'm excited about my excitement because that is what is going to be the next, you know, 20, 40, 
I don't know how many X years of my life that I have in this career. And so I am excited that I am excited about this. <laughs> Another thing that excites me is building innovative tools that does not exist and that no one else has come up with before and that will truly shape the field of what that tool is built for. That excites me a lot. And throughout this year, I really tried my best to build innovative tools. And I'm really, I'm really excited for what I've built. And I'm excited because I put into practice the mentality that I came into med school with, which was take an idea and then set yourself on fire. With it. And so I hope in these next couple years, I will be able to witness the impact of the things that I've built and created. Okay, another thing that excites me is becoming excellent at something over time. And so this goes back to when I was a little kid, when I was seven years old and I first started playing soccer, I decided decided one day when I was, you know, eight years old in my orange jersey that I was going to be excellent at playing soccer. I decided that over the next couple of years, I'm going to dedicate a lot of time becoming excellent or great at a sport. And this was the first time, you know, in my eight years of life that I had decided I was going to be great at something. And it didn't even matter the result. It didn't even matter if I actually was great at playing soccer. It's more of the mindset that comes with it because the practice of becoming great at something is more important than whether or not you actually become great at that thing. And when I was eight years old, I would dedicate hours and hours to playing soccer, to becoming great at this one thing. And this entailed a lot of blood and sweat, right? I, there wasn't a time when I did not have a soccer ball at my feet. Like I literally had a soccer ball in the house. So when I would wake up, the first thing that I would touch would be the soccer ball on the floor in my room. You know, on the weekends, I would have like six games at a time. I, there was a point when I was on like three soccer teams at a time because you can play in different regions and there's like a whole thing. But basically, and that's what I love about becoming a physician and training in the fields of medicine is that you grow exponentially. And over time, over the next, you know, 30 X years, as you work, as you put an effort over time, you become better and better and you become more of a master at your craft. And that excites me a lot. So I've been feeling for only like an hour <laughs> you know that your life must not be very exciting if your first year of med school was one of the highlights of your life so far no i'm kidding i had a great time i learned a lot i grew a lot the point of this video is to say that i'm proud of what i've accomplished so far because it's important to smell the roses along the way and to take a deep breath because you got this